I'm running for Miami-Dade County Sheriff because I think uh, the, the residents deserve a sheriff who has experience and not just in the administrative aspect of policing and not just command aspect of policing, but also in operational real life experience with boots on the ground. Um, I owe a lot to this community. I have 27 years of experience in the Miami-Dade Police Department. I've held every civil service rank. I've been an officer, I've been in the SWAT team, I've been an instructor in the SWAT team, I've been a sergeant in narcotics, I've been a lieutenant in robbery, I've been a captain in five different places, and I retired as a major of Special Patrol where I oversaw the SWAT team, the bomb squad, the aviation unit, the marine patrol unit, the canine unit, the motors unit, the divers unit. I was the operations commander for the Surfside building collapse, and I was the use of force subject matter expert for Miami-Dade County. And so I think that that level of experience puts me in a unique position to run this police department in a way that's fair, in a way that uh, we end up being a, a principle-based police department. And I owe it to the community, and I owe it to the men and women in this department who deserve true leadership. I think one of the things we've done in the law enforcement industry to begin with is we haven't done a good enough job of being present. I mean, I think there's a difference between being attendant and being present. And one of the things I've always been wanting to do, I was the subject matter expert for all matters related to use of force or police use of force. And one of the things I think we've always could have done better is communicate with the community and explain to them and again, uh, be present with them, explain to them how police operate, what the protocols are for different situations, how an investigation works, because it's too late to do that after, a fa after an incident. We need to do that. We need to front load all of that information so that they, you know, when the, public, when the public realizes and understands the protocols and the considerations we make when making a decision, and they know that before the fact, I think they're a lot more tolerant to uh, to the decisions we make. Even if they don't agree 100%, they understand the considerations that we've, we made before making that decision. We need to fix community relations. That's one aspect of it. We need to fix our relationship with, uh, with the, the children in Miami-Dade, develop a more trusting relationship with us, and realize that we are the community we serve, and that's what I plan to do. Again, I plan to be present, not just in attendance. It's one of the things that's going on in, in the industry altogether. I think uh, there's a, there has to be an acknowledgement that mental illness is not illegal and mental illness does not make you a, a criminal, but we also have to identify the fact that police may not be the best prepared to handle every scenario and mental illness, and mental illness is one of them. And so I think mental illness also we have to look at and, and acknowledge that it's, a, it's an issue not just outside of the department, but even within the police officers itself. So there's a lot of programs out there. There's a co-response uh, uh, methodology that's going around the country. I'd like, to, I'd like to visit that. I know it's happening right now in Miami-Dade. I'm the kind of person that likes to measure twice and cut once. And so we need to look at the efficacy of this program and see how we can uh, either magnify the program if it's working, but also pivot and look for other solutions with our, with our county partners, with even our state partners, and see how we can uh, maximize our efforts with dealing with mental illness. But I think it's really important to deal with mental illness within the department too. For years, ever since I was a, a, a lieutenant, we implemented certain uh, criteria for officers to receive uh, therapy and do that in a way that didn't require. In, in other words, we made it mandatory for officers whenever they go into a, a, a high profile incident, we made it mandatory for them to seek help and, uh, and be evaluated. And we did that because we wanted to give officers a vehicle to be able to go seek that, that guidance and not have to do it under the umbrella that they need help, but that they have, that, that this, that's available and they receive it. I think the role of the sheriff, uh, we have to acknowledge that there's different jurisdictional responsibilities. And I do believe that as a sheriff, my main focus is public safety and public safety is influenced by the number of information or the amount of information we get from victims and witnesses. So I never want the Miami-Dade Sheriff's Office badge to be uh, identified or associated with 
immigration status. I don't want that to happen. Uh, if, your, if your family member gets uh, assaulted or gets robbed in the street and a person that's undocumented was a victim, or I'm sorry, was a witness, I cannot have that person scared to contact the police because it affects everyone's, uh, everyone's safety. So we need to make it a, a situation where even if you're undocumented, you're not scared of approaching the police, you're not scared of, of explaining and giving information to police officers. So we're not, we're not gonna become an arm for immigration. However, if you are a criminal who is victimizing the residents of Miami-Dade County, I will use every local, state, and federal law to get you out of this country. I was born and raised here. I've made a, a family here. Uh, I think Miami-Dade is the crown jewel of the state of Florida. I think Miami-Dade is actually now the new New York, and I lived in New York for several years. For several years, uh, I, I think there's there's so much culture here. There's every race, color, religion. Every every culture lives in Miami-Dade. We're the new New York, and I wouldn't trade it for anything.